So the, the question gives us an equation for position. Its position, S, is, you know, T cubed minus 6T squared minus 15T plus 7. And then the first thing it asks for, what is the total distance traveled? All right, so what is the total distance traveled? So it gives us position. Uh, and now don't overcomplicate things. Sometimes I give you an equation for position and ask to find the position. You know, we're about to find the distance traveled. We don't have to take derivative or integral. Uh, you know, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna plug into that equation that we've been given. So if we plug in t is equal to zero, we wanna see where we started, right? We wanna see where we started. If you wanna find the distance or change of position, things like that, you wanna see where you started. I plugged in zero, we started at seven. All right, and see where we ended. I plugged in the end of a uh, time of 10, uh, and I know we ended at 257. So the change in, let's be careful, the change in position, 257 minus 7, 250 feet. All right, that is the change of position. That is the displacement. All right, but is that the total distance traveled? What if we started at 7? What if we went, traveled all the way to 350 and then walked backwards? I would, my feet would feel like I walked more than just the 250, right? So if you, you go past something and come back, the total distance traveled might be different than the change of position, right? Does that make sense? So we just need to test out. We just need to check. Did we go past and come back? back did we go maybe forward and then start going backwards how can we find out whether we changed directions right whether we went past it and came back any ideas uh not not exactly midpoint no finding where that equation is equal to zero and find like the range in between see if it's negative on position uh, almost, yeah, not not this not where this equation is equal to zero, but where where what is equal to velocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to find where velocity is equal to zero. Okay. So for problems like this, where you want to find the total distance traveled, you need to find where velocity is equal to zero. So let's where is velocity equal to zero? Did they give us the velocity? No, but they gave us a position, and we're smart enough to find the velocity. If we're given position, an equation for position, and we want to find velocity, is that a derivative or an integral? It's a derivative, right? Velocity equals ds dt. So the derivative of this right here, 3t squared minus 12t minus 15. And so what we are doing, we are checking, check, check where velocity is equal to zero. And, and that makes sense, right? Where does velocity equal to zero? That's where you go from positive velocity to negative velocity, which would be like the outermost point you went to, maximum or minimum, all right, slope, or, or you can think of that's where my velocity changes signs, right? V equals zero is where my velocity changes signs from positive to negative or negative to positive. Set this equal to zero. Uh, this might be the last time I do the quadratic uh, formula in class, but I definitely expect you to be able to do right, negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, all over 2a if this is a, b, c. So negative, negative 12 plus and minus uh, negative 12, but I'm going to square it, uh, minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so I would get the root. Uh, t is equal to 5. There's probably another one, probably a negative one that doesn't make sense. T is equal to 5, okay? So what is it? That velocity is equal to 0 at a time of 5. We need to test, fi figure out what, what position did it go out to at time of 5, right? So plug in 5. Uh, we would get negative 93. Oh, okay. So actually, I started at 7. I was actually going backwards to negative 93. Position negative 93. What distance is that? 100. You think of it as is negative 100, but for, if we want total distance, we're wanting the, the absolute value, right? My feet felt like 
it traveled 100 feet, okay? So I started at seven, went to negative 93. Then from negative 93, I changed directions, right? B is equal to zero. I changed signs of my velocity. Uh, and so then I went all the way to 257. That would be 350. So total distance traveled would be 100 and 350. Absolute value of the change in position um, at every, you know, break it up into segments where it changes direction. All right, so 450 feet. Total distance, 450 feet. All right, so if you want to find the total distance traveled, make sure you break it up into sections uh, where velocity is equal to zero, or really where velocity changes signs, changes direction. Okay, so a few little definitions. Uh, so there, there's a difference between the average velocity and the average speed, okay? Average velocity is just the change in position, delta S. All right, so we can just take, uh, we ended at 257. We started at 7 over 10 seconds. Uh, 25 feet per second would be the average velocity. For the average speed, um, I need to take the absolute values of those distances. I just need to add up the total distance traveled. All right, because speed doesn't matter the direction. I just need to add up the uh, total distance traveled. So this would be 450 over 10, 45 feet per second. All right, does that make sense? The average velocity would be different from the average speed and the average speed would be larger. Uh, yeah, because the average velocity, I was going some negative velocity and some positive velocity. And so th those averaged out to 25. But with speed, I don't, I don't consider a negative speed and a positive speed. I, I consider the absolute value of it all. That's why I would have a larger value of average speed than average velocity. Okay, so try and find the distance traveled or we're trying to find the average speed. You need to break it up into sections and find the total distance. All right, but then instantaneous velocity, that would be the derivative. So if we want the instantaneous velocity at at that, after 10 seconds, uh, I would take the derivative. So 3t squared minus 12t minus 15. And if I want to know the instantaneous velocity at 10 seconds, plug in t is equal to 10. 165 feet per second. So I'm, I'm, at the end of this, I'm going really very fast. I'm really increasing my speed. I was going negative velocity, then I, then I got to zero, then I started going with positive velocity, and then I really started going pretty fast. Um, I ended it at 165. And the instantaneous acceleration at this time, so the derivative of that, 6t minus 12, uh, and plug in 10, 48 feet per second squared. So I'm really going fast. And getting faster and faster and faster, right? That acceleration is the instantaneous change in velocity. Okay, so that problem, uh, just main thing, difference between distance and displacement. Okay, and difference between average speed and average velocity. All right.